Welcome back to the Kapower Hour. I am Lauren Powell. And I'm Sean Casey. And we are the, the Kapows. And we're having ca cocktails. Kapocktails. <laughs> Kapocktails. Kapocktails. This is an espresso martini because we were like, we are le tired. Um, <laughs> but also, should we have a drink? Yeah. And so we're having an adult for loco. <laughs> yeah, you asked for espresso. And I was like, what if we made espresso martinis? Yeah. And I know that's sort of a cheat because I know that if I'll I, say yes you'll to that. say yes all the time to yeah. espresso martinis. So. All day. Yeah. We're using a salted chocolate pretzel whiskey from Scatterbrain. If you have a bunch of weird flavors like I do in your bar and you're looking for more ways to easily, that's the thing. I am the laziest bartender. Easiest way to like whip up a cocktail. I actually think espresso martinis are very easy because it's all it is is espresso or cold brew, ice. Kahlua. Kahlua and whatever your, you want to put in. whatever your liquor is. Yeah. You can do vodka or you can do a flavored liquor if you're trying to just give it a little more pizzazz. Or if you're trying to work through all the random alcohol that you have in your bar. <laughs> that also. What are we talking about today? Oh boy. Just want to quickly touch on the response to the breastfeeding video. Mm -hmm. This is going to be a much lighter, like fun episode, but I just, there was like this overwhelming response I'm, sh I'm shocked of just like the amount of comment, like on Instagram, I put up a clip talking about my breastfeeding struggles and feeling like my body had failed and, and all that. And just not knowing that I had no idea that breastfeeding could be such an uphill battle and it isn't black and white. And that's so many people are. 1100 comments on Instagram wow. of people telling their story. They're detailing their breastfeeding struggle as well. 1,500 comments on TikTok. And these videos didn't go viral. These videos don't have millions of views. Mm -hmm. Like the ratio of comment to view is astronomical. And it's just very telling. It's like all these women from year, they've had kids for years mm -hmm. or recently, and they still remember their like breastfeeding trauma or yeah. feeling alone or feeling like no one talked about it, which is exactly how I felt. So a capositive from that, which we used to do capositives, remember? Yeah. And then we had Quinn. What happened? <laughs> hey. Just kidding. She is our- You gotta she, be careful because we got a one-star review. Yeah, wow. I, we got our first one-star review. Somebody left a, a one-star review that said the fact that Sean thinks his baby crying is annoying is not funny. Yeah, which is such a weird thing because I wasn't saying it to be funny. We were just talking about how it made us feel. <laughs> Anyway, please don't give us bad reviews. We need good reviews. How do we get on that tangent? You were just talking about the overwhelming positiveness or the, the response, I guess. Oh, so a positive was honestly for me realizing or finding out that so many women had also struggled, that breastfeeding mm -hmm. is not this one size fits all, that it's not like, oh, everyone you know has freezers full. Right. No one's talking about it, probably just because they all thought they were the only ones yeah. who also were going through it. So yeah. that's a positive to come out of like talking about that journey. You know, a lot of people's like comments, like they made me cry. Yeah. I thought it was cool. I had some friends from high school I haven't talked to since high school reach out to me. And uh, yeah, it was just really awesome to hear from people and People you didn't even know were listening to the podcast. Or, yeah, I guess I should be careful about the the stories I tell about high school. Yeah, if friends from high school oh, are still listening, that's what I want to hear. <laughs> if you are a friend of Sean's from high school, send me a message immediately. I want the tea. I want the dirt. Give it to me. But if you conversely, if you listen and you went to my high school, don't, reach out to me. No, don't. <laughs> Again. Yeah, I would love to hear from Lauren's high school classmates. Okay, well, that's we're starting with a positive instead of ending with a positive. Something else crazy that happened last week I wanted to mention. Uh, Blake Lively, we're yeah. best friends now. <laughs> basically. No, not basically, we are. And I don't know if you took math, but there is this thing called the transitive property. And it's A plus B equals C, I think. And <laughs> <laughs> is that not it? That is not it it's at all. It's A plus B equals C. Then C equals B. <laughs> what's the transition? What's, it, what's in that? I'm so bad at math. If A equals B and B equals C, then A equals C. Nerd. <laughs> nerd alert. AP Calc. Hmm. I took AP Calc. Hmm. Pretty sure I convinced my professor to give me a B. <laughs> my my uh, high school teacher. He actually, shout out Mr. Keebler, because he used to call me Lord Pow. Lord Pow. Which is kind of like Kapow. Yeah. He foresaw that you were going to be married to someone with a cuh 
<laughs> wow. Okay, so transitive okay. property. So vis-a-vis -vis yep. the transitive property that has already been established yep. by my math nerd husband, I am best friends with Taylor Swift. <laughs> oh, yeah, I didn't think about that. Because Blake and Taylor are besties. Yep. So Blake saw my video. Let's let's go back. I, I reviewed it. Blake Lively has a cocktail line and a mixer line, and it's called Betty Buzz. And so then she dropped a cocktail line while I was pregnant called Betty Booze that I was very curious about. Finally got to review it. Uh, I thought they were delicious. They were amazing. I think I had a, a mild panic attack. One was so good. <laughs> she saw the video. She commented on the video. Uh, she watched the whole thing because she used my phrase that I signed off the video with at the very end. She said in a comment, she, I said like, Seltzberg, XOXO, Seltzberg girl, which is a joke on XOXO, Gossip Girl, which is a show that Blake Lively is from. Yeah. You know that, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. I okay. know that because you told me that right, right after she did it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> anyway, so she commented Seltzburg girl for the win. Yeah. She, she And she spelled Seltzburg right. That's not an easy word to just stumble <laughs> upon and spell correctly. So Blake Lively definitely knows who you are. She knows I'm the Seltzburg. She probably immediately texted Taylor and oh, was like, hey, Yo, you got to meet this girl. Hey, let's get some seltzers. <laughs> I know a girl. So what's going to happen? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Taylor's in the Bahamas. She's not thinking. I was like, hey, let's message her. And you're like, no, no, no. We, we couldn't message her. You made me message Jennifer Aniston, and I feel stupid. Jennifer Aniston commented on or reshared one of my videos years ago in the middle yeah. of COVID. And so I slid into her DMs and... Nothing happened. Crickets. Nothing happened so? except my fragile ego. You got to you gotta, you gotta work on that. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. I'm always just like, oh, it's worth a shot, right? Shoot your shot. Silence is rejection. But if, if you're 99% certain that they're not going to say anything, then why is it like a letdown? I'd rather not know. Well, Blake, if you're listening, please reach out to Lauren. She'd love to hear from you. So another transitive property, or I guess that's <laughs> Is this like it. seven degrees of Kevin Bacon? Yes, kind of. <laughs> Ryan Reynolds is married to Blake Lively. Yep. Who made who more famous? I grew up knowing Blake Lively. She has always been super famous in my book, but- if you're a dude, you probably didn't really know who she was until she married Ryan Reynolds. Yeah. So did Ryan Reynolds bring Blake Lively to this mega stardom? I kind of feel like like people are obsessed with their relationship. Yeah. And that elevated both of them, yeah. even though he had, what's that superhero? Deadpool. Oh, Deadpool. Yeah. So what's the other, so you. Oh, the okay. So yeah. the connection. Connection. So you remember two years ago, so Ryan Reynolds um, and Rob McElhaney, which is the guy from It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia, they bought a soccer team in Wrexham. Wales, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then they made this documentary, Welcome to Wrexham. We loved the show. You... Ha, like Rob is your doppelganger. And so for Halloween two years ago, I dressed up as Ryan Reynolds and Wrexham. And, and I dressed up dressed as up myself. In, with a Wrexham jersey on. <laughs> this is crazy because that like the video didn't really get served out. I think it was I a very most, niche audience. Yeah, most people wouldn't really recognize Rob and Ryan as well, a as a Halloween costume. If you haven't could watched be because Wrexham. I was dressing like Ryan and I just put fake hair. I wore yeah. a fake beard and I think at the time the Rexham, Rexham, like we were obsessed with it, but I don't know. It's a very niche yeah. audience. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, they, not them personally, although maybe reached out to use, to possibly, to consider using that, our Halloween costume video in a promo spot for the next season of Welcome to Rexham. So basically the universe is just like shoving Blake Lively and Ryan Reynolds into our faces. Into our, into our faces. And what's crazy. Even crazier. Even crazier. Caitlin Olsen, who is Rob McElhaney's wife. I once brought takeout to her car <laughs> in the Valley of Sherman Oaks when I worked at the worst restaurant in the world. That was the first little connection. Yeah, and then when I worked at Fox <laughs> Digital, we shared a conference room with It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia, and I remember I ran into yeah. Rob in the kitchen, and I said, fuck yeah, celery. Remember that? <laughs> yeah, so it's, anyway, it's just, it's been be predestined. It's been please predestined. Be our friends. We're not this weird. <laughs> so anyway, I'm really glad I liked Betty Booze. <laughs> yeah. This whole episode is just gonna be about Blake and Ryan Reynolds. <laughs> okay, so one question we haven't really addressed yet that I feel like was a big thing. We kind of left people hanging uh, when we were pregnant and doing the pregnancy pod. How did we get to Quinn's name? Mm. So, you know, we obviously didn't tell anyone what the name was going to be. That's very common. People just don't want to have opinions sway 
how they feel about a name one way or the other. Did we talk about the, the stewardess on the flight that we told? Yeah. yeah, that's why I stopped. That's why I decided not to tell anyone. I was like, she was like, do you have a name? And I was like, yeah, but we're not telling anyone. And she was like, who am I going to tell? You don't even know me. And I was like, oh, that's a good point. And I told her Quinn and she goes, oh, okay. <laughs> and it wasn't a good feeling. So I was like, I'm just going to zip it up. Yep. You know what we didn't talk about? Oh man, I got so many things. I'm going to, we're going to tell you, we're going to tell you how we came to the name Quinn. But what we haven't talked about is how my best friend. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. So back when I was getting ready to do my baby shower in <laughs> September, my uh, best friend here in San Diego, she was about to get a puppy and we were all like crafting, DIYing, doing stuff for my baby shower, which she was throwing me. And people were asking her, what are you going to name your puppy? And she was like, well, I'm thinking this one name, but I might save it for my future child. And we had already picked our name at this point, but yeah. but we, we didn't even tell, like we didn't tell family, we didn't tell friends. So no one knew. She, nobody knew. And she goes, so there's a bunch of people in the room and she goes, I'm thinking about naming the puppy Quinn, but I might save it for a future child. Did and just I just like, like sp- <laughs> spit out no. your drink. Yeah, like. I was like, <gasps> I froze. Cause I was like, okay, I can't react. Cause then I'm telling well, like a room you, full of it, 10 people. That's the name I chose. And it wasn't like you were having a conversation with it. Like you just Someone overheard was, her say that, yeah. right? Yeah. And yeah. I'd never heard her mention that before. Not that we've ever like, we'd never talked about baby names. She wasn't even pregnant at the time. She's pregnant now. Anyway, I froze. I didn't know what to do. And it was like a month later or a few weeks later. And I finally was like, I have to tell you something. And I was, I was really distraught yeah, about it. Like you sort of had like a mild panic attack about it. Yeah. Cause it's yeah. like, how do I tell you that coincidentally the name you think would be good for a child is the name I have chosen and what are the odds that and you what both? what are the odds? <laughs> yeah, it's pretty incredible. So she, I mean, she was amazing. She was like, oh my God, I'm so happy for you. I love it. It's beautiful. She named her dog Buzz, not Quinn. So <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> and now she's pregnant and I don't know what her child's name is going to be. I mean, Buzz. Maybe it's going to be Quinn. That'd be funny. That's a U, Q, U, B, U, uh, no I. What are but you if doing you, over if there? If you turn Z's on their side, they become N's. <laughs> There's some sort of like anagram in there. Yeah. Wow. Anyway, how did we land on Quinn's name? So when we were discussing it here on the podcast, we were giving you guys hints. We were saying like, okay, it's Irish. Yep. um, And it has- It's easy to spell. It's easy to spell. So it's not Gaelic. The clue that I knew would trip everyone up, which I wanted to, I told you, I was like, you're not going to guess this name. You're not. I don't want you to guess it. The clue that we gave you guys that sent everyone the wrong direction was- it was alliteration yep. with Casey, the last name Casey. Yep. And so all the guesses were C, C names. Nobody thought about Q. Not a single person guessed Quinn. A friend of ours Leanne did. did. But that's because we told her it's not alliteration the way you think it's alliteration. Oh, so you gave her an additional. And then she goes, Quinn. But it's like I wanted to throw everyone off the scent, and I did. Yeah. But I still lo- like Quinn Casey. Mm. <clears throat> Quinn yeah. Casey. Quinn Casey. Quarterback. <laughs> hopefully not quinn casey clarinet player yeah first chair first chair oboe i still think it sounds like a sportscaster quinn casey signing off but we used kinder the that's not where we got it though i thought quinn was on there Mm-mm. no i've been cool. telling everyone it was on there no uh it's been on my list um, are you sure it wasn't on there Maybe it was, but that's not where I got the idea. Let me let me see. I'm checking our heart list. Girl names. Quinn is not on it. <laughs> <laughs> you were right. So co- co- the, the the reason I really love Quinn was like we both were like, oh, this would be really good for a boy or a girl, and I loved that idea. Yeah. And it was the one name where we were like, other than Ivy, which ended up being her middle name, we just it was the easiest choosing the girl name. Yeah. Was so much easier than choosing a boy name. We just our list of boy names was astronomically long. I mean, not that long in my mind. Cutter. Cutter. But Ivy, so her middle name is Ivy. We chose that because my I wanted to incorporate some family name and my great aunt, great great aunt, my great aunt. She's really great. Uh, her, she's Ann Ivy, and mm-hmm. she lived to be 102. And then my actually my cousin sent me a photo of her from like 1906 or something when she was 16, 16. or whatever the math is, like an old portrait photo of I of Ann Ivy to give to Quinn. That's pretty cool. Like, I think that's really cool. So where did we get Quinn from? Me. Quinn has been an Irish girl name because I love the idea of a name that's androgynous or like. Mm. Could be boy, could be girl. Yeah. And Quinn would be a very cute name for a boy too. 
Hmm. So I've been lying to everyone. Wow. How do you feel about that? A little weird. I wasn't doing it on purpose. Why are you telling people we got it from a naming dating website? Everyone just website. asked, how did you come up with the, 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 the name? And I was just like, oh, well, we use this app, you no, know. And absolutely not. It's Lauren did it. Lauren did it. Okay. But you liked it. I liked it, I, yeah. I told you plenty of names, and that yeah. was the one that we both were very excited mm-hmm. about. Yeah. Quinn Casey was strong. Okay. We just had our first date night. Yeah. Quinn is four months old. Your parents were coming to town. We asked if they would watch her. Not only watch her that night that so we could go have a date, but also watch her the next morning so that our date could turn into a night out and sleep in. And so, whew. Mama had a night out. I had a drink or <laughs> 17. Yeah, so we went to Wolf in the Woods, which is this adorable, cozy little restaurant in San Diego. There's this there's this neighborhood in San Diego called Mission Hills. I've never really, I don't know much about San Diego. I haven't been here long. Only, only like three and a half years. We don't leave the house. <laughs> Two of those years were COVID. Uh, anyway, we're driving through the, this Mission Hills neighborhood. It's this mansions. Yeah, I'd never been there. I'd been in San Diego a on, long time. On a never, big hill, you can yeah. see downtown, you can see the airport. Like the houses are stunning. They're massive. And then all of a sudden it just stops and there's this restaurant called Wolf in the Woods right there on the edge of the neighborhood. It looks like it could have been a house at some yeah. point or yeah. which was recommended to us by the San Diego influencer. I just happened to follow her name is what Erica Craves. I love her. And I asked her where I should go for a date night. And it was delicious and amazing. And I had a lot of wine. <laughs> and the waitress there, I don't know if she just sensed that it had been a while. <laughs> she sensed your needs. She was like, you guys want to split a glass? And then she poured us full glasses. Like, <laughs> yeah. we bought a bottle to go with dinner. But then I wanted, I was like, I know my tolerance is pretty low. So I should take it easy. So I was like, let's just split a glass. And then she's like, or. And so we got full pours twice we were gonna go do karaoke because why not at another place i'd never been to called lamplighter yep which is like a famous san diego karaoke spot so famous you've never taken me there how many times have we gone to karaoke yeah so we go there and i've already had this is so usually on our when we used to go out to dinner we would have like pre-cocktails at home remember this time i was like no i don't need a pre-cocktail we had a coffee (laughs) <laughs> yeah, just coffee, no martini. Anyway, so we get to Lamplighter. Well, let's let's back up a little bit because I was like, because you can sing, like you're a performer. No, you I have, cannot sing. Yes, Stop you can. Telling people that you have a voice that's good enough. Good enough. It's and, average. I can hit no. I can sing in tune. You can sing, and so you're like you're not a singer. I'm not trying to say that you're a singer, but like you can sing, and so I'm like, hey, are you gonna get on stage? You should sing uh, "Party in the USA" by Miley Cyrus. And at dinner, you were just like, and I, I asked the waitress to like ask you if you were singing and tell you I heard that you were singing Party in the USA. So like, you weren't mad at me, but you were just like, do not, do not say that to my friends. Like when we get there, like don't try and get people to get me on stage. And I was like, okay, okay. All yeah. right. That's, that's fine. I'll, I'll leave it alone. Because like karaoke with your friends is one thing. Karaoke at a famous karaoke bar. No, that is not where. But did you get on stage and sing? <sighs> I did. (laughs) So I had some more drinks. First of all, uh, they had espresso martini on the menu and I was like, yay. So this is kind of a divey karaoke bar. It's cash only, which is hilarious. They had espresso martini. I was super excited, but then it like comes out of a tap and it's never as good as they made it from scratch. So whatever. So then I switched to seltzer to kind of pace myself. And I don't know, at some point I found myself signing up for getting jiggy with it. (laughs) Because I was like, I don't want to sing, but I can try to rap. And just way easier. Well, because with Quinn, I learned all these like lullabies. Or not oh, learned, is but- that why you chose that song? Why? Because you rapped that song to Quinn. Yeah. Oh, I didn't even put that together. Yeah. Okay. So when I was trying to like find songs to sing to Quinn, the, all the nursery, all the, f- the like famous nursery songs, they're so short and they don't have a lot of words. And so originally I need to find longer things to sing to her. And I thought I knew a lot of the words to get in jiggy with it, but I didn't. So I, I learned it to sing. I learned all the verses to sing to Quinn slowly and like a little bit like nursery like. Uh, so I was like, oh, I got this, right? I can do this. I now know all the words. But I, the key Eight part, drinks. the key <laughs> part is, well, yeah, I'd had a lot of drinks and then two, I was singing it slowly to Quinn. Yeah. So doing it like On the pace. song. Yeah. So I get up there. It's so fast. That song is so fast. I don't think I've practiced it at speed ever. I know all the words, but can I you like. You still did a great job. It, still eh, was, anyway. it was fun. I was just like, oh, oh, 
for the woman who is like, don't don't tell anyone that to make me go up there. Because party in the USA is so high pitched. Oh, that would have brought the house down though. It's just so high. The notes are so high. You can do it. No, I can't. I believe in you. So 100 drinks later, <laughs> we come home. First of all, so your parents are watching her, but we put her down. And Quinn, we have been blessed. We are very fortunate that she is a great night sleeper. When she goes down, she goes down. She doesn't wake up till five or six. So she goes down at like 7 p.m. She wakes up at 5 a.m. or 6 a.m. Never since like six weeks or eight weeks has she woken up in the middle of the night, ever. And so I was like, look, she never wakes up. You're golden. Just, you know, have the baby monitor on. Everything will be easy peasy. She's such an easy baby. <laughs> so we're sitting at dinner and I get the notification from the baby monitor. There's motion on the baby monitor. There's sound on the baby monitor. And I look. It's only been she, like an hour. Yeah, it's like 7 p.m. or 8 p.m. at this point. And she's awake at an hour and a half after we put her down. I was like, she's never, are you kidding me? So I'm like, oh God, this is not good. Here comes a phone call. We're gonna have to go home. Yeah, but they get her, they get her back down. 30 minutes later, she's awake again. <laughs> this literally never happens. Quinn knew. She knew mom was gone. She knew. So then the next morning I wake up at naturally at like 7 a.m. I checked the baby no, monitor. No, not even 7, right? Yeah, it was had, 7. Oh, was it 7? Okay. I checked the baby monitor at 7 a.m. and Quinn's still sleeping. And I was like, wait, this must be her first nap, right? So I text your mom and I was like, is Quinn still asleep or is this her nap? And she was like, she's still asleep. I've been checking the monitor. She just like hasn't, she hasn't woken up yet. And I was like, what? <laughs> the one time that we have parents letting us sleep in. She sleeps, she sleeps in, in. <laughs> like 730. <laughs> Just hilarious that the first night away is the night that she chooses to wake up several times start changing and things up. sleep in. Yeah. yeah. But we had a great night. Thanks, mom and dad, for watching her. Great night. Horrible hangover. I was a mess the next day. Yeah. I, I was just tired. Yeah. Like sleeping while drunk is never good sleep. Especially when you have to take care of a baby the next day, too. Even though my parents were like, there to took help. the morning shift and helped, yeah. it still is like, it's just not fun. Well, then it was the Carolina versus Michigan State basketball game. So a bunch of people came over and everybody just wanted to hold her. So that was helpful, too. Do you yeah. want to talk about March Madness? Is that Sure. It's sad. Yeah. So both of our teams are out of the tournament. Well, let's, let's back up a little bit. So Michigan State played North Carolina. They both won their first round games of March Madness. Last summer, when we did our gender reveal, we hired our college mascots to come help us. We hired Sparty and Ramses. Mm -hmm. And they flew to my parents' house in Michigan. We had a big party. And Ramses was the last last mascot standing in the bubble. A lot of people don't realize they, you know, they see the gender reveal and they're like, oh, I thought you were having a boy because I we did Carolina Blue meant girl because that was my my school and Michigan State Green meant boy because that was yours. Right. So a lot of people are like, oh my God, did the gender reveal get it wrong? Like you yeah. thought you were having a boy and then out came a girl. <laughs> Fast forward eight months. Our schools are now playing. The mascots playing, are facing off in basketball. Playing each other in basketball. Yeah, it was, it was fun. I was Michigan State was not good this year, so I had very low expectations. It was tough because... All of your San Diego friends are Michigan State fans. Yeah. And your parents were in town and they're big Michigan State fans. And your brother is there. Everyone in our house, we probably had 20 people over. And everyone was a Michigan State fan, except for me. And so I got to put Quinn in Carolina gear so that, because we were outnumbered. Michigan State got crushed. Carolina just lost to Alabama. Both of our teams are out and it's sad. I love March Madness. And my third team, SDSU, where I went to grad school, is also out. So we are... And it, I'm a little relieved because UNC was playing in Los Angeles. That's where the Sweet 16 was yesterday, the Sweet 16. Mm -hmm. So Elite Eight was also going to be in LA on Saturday and I was going to try to go. And that just would have been shenanigans. Like trying to go to LA either with you or without you, trying to find someone to watch Quinn during this game. I would have done it, but it would have given me so much anxiety to do it. And yeah. now I don't have to have the, the pressure of trying to go to the game. So we are getting ready to go on our first trip with Quinn. We're trying to like, we're watching all the things, reading all the advice and the tips and like, how do you travel with a baby? Here's what we've got so far, but I would love some more tips if you got them. Okay, so she'll be five months old when we go back to North Carolina. We've heard you should gate check your stroller. Car seat. And car seat. So we're thinking about getting the Duna stroller, not even bringing, I did end up with okay, the rose gold. another <laughs> expensive stroller and car not seat. not as expensive. When we were deciding between strollers, I did win and I got my rose gold Cybex stroller and I love it, it's beautiful. I don't want to take it on a plane. I think there's, so the Duna stroller, Seems to me like it's a great stroller to travel, travel with because yeah. it also doubles as a car seat. It's a car yeah. seat where the legs pop out and then becomes a stroller. 
So that just seems amazing. Yep. You're checking, you're gate checking your car seat, which also, you know, is your stroller. So I think that's a good investment. She's going to sit in our lap the whole time. So we don't need like a car seat on the plane. We don't need a seat for her. We're going to try to board last with the baby or the first person boards first. First parent boards, boards first with all the stuff gets situated. And then the person with the baby boards at the very end so that you're not sitting there waiting on the plane right. with the baby who now has just wasted like 30 to 45 minutes of her like awake time. Yeah, I think that's a really good idea. We, who knows what's going to happen because we have our flights at like 6 a.m. There's no direct flight from San Diego to Raleigh. So we have a connection. So we're going to be on two different planes with her in a day. Like her sleep is going to be completely off. Yeah, I just think that any way you look at it, it's going to be bad. Like and if it, we it, have it, headphones. Yeah. We did test headphones at a bar. We took her to a bar to watch March Madness Friday afternoon. She, she loved it. And the headphones, she slept for an hour wearing headphones. I just don't know how her naps on the plane are going to go because we, we like have to bounce her and hold her well, to get and, her to and fall normally, asleep. Normally, like we like to have a couple drinks on the plane. What, what's going to happen there? I'm going to need a drink <laughs> for my anxiety. I'm like, I'm not nervous. I'm just expecting it to go poorly. And if it goes anything better than poorly, then that's a huge win. I saw a post that was like, they're like, don't use the water in the sink to wash her pacifiers and stuff if they fall on the floor because the water in the sink on airplanes is really dirty. Didn't know that. I mean, it's probably... Can we get some like pilot people and flight attendants to weigh in here? How dirty is that water? <laughs> so any advice you have for us for traveling with a five-month-old on an airplane, bring them. That would be helpful. Send, us, send it to us. Because we're also going to Hawaii in May for a wedding, so... Um, recently I was walking around the yard with her yesterday and we swear a lot. I never swear in my videos because I, I know people watch my stuff with their kids. I think it's really jarring. And I'm also always worried that the algorithm is going to flag my stuff if I swear too much or at all. So I just don't swear. But in real life, I swear a lot. And I guess if I'm capable of not swearing in a video, I'll be capable of stopping swearing yeah. in front of my child. But yeah. I was like, how long do we have until we have to stop swearing in front of her? Yeah. What, what does the internet say? I don't know. But oh. that got me. So I was Googling like funny stories about babies Reddit, right? And so one of the topics on Reddit was like, what are things your your child has said that you know are bad and you had to not let them see you laugh? Yeah. And as soon as you laugh, they know that they said something funny and they're going to continue they, saying it. They're going to do it again. Yeah. So a lot of the stories were swearing ones, but I found a couple that I was going to read to you. Okay. Okay. So this one... My daughter, now 12, announced to a crowd of friends and family when she was three, my dad has a tail and it's in the front. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's amazing. Yeah, I guess it does look like a Looks tail. Looks like a tail. Yeah. To a child. <laughs> oh my God, this one. I once caught my youngest son, about three at the time, peeing in the corner of his room, right next to the wastebasket and sort of behind a bookshelf. When I asked him what he was, why he was doing that, when there was a bathroom 10 feet away, he said he was watering the ants. Confused about what ants and why, I went over and peeked behind the bookshelf and I found the ants and the half donut he'd swiped and shoved back there, along with various bits of candy, a slice of bread, and most of a chicken nugget. Apparently, he had seen an ant and decided to cultivate his own little <laughs> ant farm in his room. I mean, she should be impressed with his ingenuity. So he was literally feeding them, trying to attract more ants. And then, <laughs> then he, he waters peeing. them. And he's peeing on them. Do you have any stories about you peeing on things when you were a little kid? No, I don't think so. My friend Jess was like, when she was giving me ideas for um, my baby registry, she had sent me this email she sent to another friend. And it was like, we didn't know if we were having a boy or a girl yet. And so she was like, there's a thing called a, a PPTP. And I was like, what is, she was like, you don't need it. She has two boys. She was like, don't get it. Don't fall trap to that. You don't need a PPTP. And I was like, what is a PPTP? And she was like, what does it sound like? So I looked it up and it's like a little thing they, yeah. that you put over the, if you have a boy baby, you put yeah. over his private parts when you're changing his diaper so they don't pee in your face yeah. or like pee everywhere. Yeah. That's hilarious to me. I have one, me like two memories of being in daycare. Do you have any? No. I have like when I was three or something and I wanted to see if I could stand up peeing like a boy. <laughs> and so I stood, I like stood over the toilet and peed. Yeah. How'd that go? I made a mess. Yeah. <laughs> I think I got kicked out of daycare. Anyway, that's why we moved from Maryland to Virginia. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Here's another one. While watching TV, my four-year-old told us she was super sorry for being a crazy bitch. <laughs> <laughs> when we explained the bad word and told her she didn't do anything wrong. And then we laughed about it. It's like That's hilarious. four year old. was just like, sorry for being a I'm crazy. Sorry, <laughs> I'm sorry for being a crazy bitch. That's this so good. Self-awareness. Yeah. 
Okay. When my 22 year old son was a little dude, the uncanny X-Men was our favorite cartoon. Burger King was putting X-Men toys in their kids meals. We went through a drive through to get some, but he was too young and they gave him a Snoopy doll. His sister got Wolverine, but he got Snoopy and he was pissed. He hucked it out the window and yelled, throw Snoopy in the fire. (laughs) We all still say that sometimes when we're mad. Flight delayed, throw Snoopy in the fire. Drop the maple syrup, throw Snoopy in the fire. Find a scratch on the car, throw Snoopy in the fire. I love that. Uh, While playing in her pretend kitchen, my four-year-old was rummaging through the cabinets and says, where the F is my colander? (laughs) Before I can say anything, she finds it, sniffs it, looks at her teddy bear and asks, did you piss in this? (laughs) What? (laughs) What? Where, where would a child get that? Where the F is my colander? Did you piss in this? (laughs) That's, that's really good. Oh man. Oh, this one's crazy. I was walking through a building with my four-year-old son when a man on crutches with one amputated leg got into the same elevator as us. My son said, mom, what happened to his leg? The man heard him and kindly said that he lost his leg a year ago. My son didn't miss a beat and said, did you check between the couch cushions? (laughs) My mom says she always loses shit in there. Wow. I was appalled. The man on the other hand was laughing so hard he was crying. Yeah. That got me thinking about like wow, first time we got in trouble as kids. Do you remember the? Do you remember getting in trouble as a, as a child? I really don't. You don't remember anything, or you never got into trouble. I don't. I don't know. I we should ask my mom. Like I don't have. I told that story about drinking in my freshman year of high school. That's my first memory of like really getting in trouble. So you were just a perfect kid. I think I was just a good kid. Like I remember my sister getting in trouble. What did Megan do? My sister lied to my mom about it. And apparently like, when she was younger, she was going through this phase where she was lying. And so my mom like knew that she lied to her. And so my mom told her, I can't remember what, like what she said, but like, oh, we're going to go buy you this. We're going to go to the store or whatever and made up something. And then she got, my sister got all excited and the mom goes, oh, sorry, I was lying. And that was like her way of like wow. teaching my head. And I remember, I remember that, but I. That's a great lesson. Yeah. I got in more trouble later in life. I didn't get in trouble later in life, but I did get into trouble early on. Yeah. That's why we're like opposites. Yeah. Well, when I was in first grade, I got sent to ISS. Did you guys have ISS? In school suspension. I don't don't know. Yeah. I don't know where the bad kids went. (laughs) (laughs) Wow. Yeah. I wasn't a bad kid. I still am mad about this. I got wrong. So I was being chased on the playground. This is first grade. I'm being chased on the playground by a boy. I didn't want to be chased by him. So I picked up a handful of rocks and I threw it at him. <laughs> Cause I like, I like yeah. I, I, he was being chased. It was like fight or you were, flight. You were defending yourself. And I was like, I don't want to be chased. I'm scared. And I picked up a handful and just chucked it at him. A little brat went and told on me. Snitches get stitches. And so <laughs> they sent me to ISS. I got in school suspension for throwing rocks. And did that kid get in no, trouble? No trouble for him. Adam something. I forget your last name. Your little bowl cut. Well, I don't think you should get in trouble for that. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. If Quinn does that, I'll be proud of her. Yeah. Yeah. And then in fifth grade, I had to have a behavior chart. Again, I am the victim of- Obviously. Just in the wrong place at the wrong time. I have like didn't deserve (laughs) any of this treatment. So in fifth grade, I used to talk during class a lot, but always like at the teacher or like out of turn. I guess they don't like that. And my teacher made me have one of those behavior charts. At the end of every day, I had to get a check mark signed off by my teacher that I behaved because I talked out of turn too much. Screw you, Mr. Tish. I think you I brought you up in another podcast episode before. Some trauma for Mr. Tish. He's like 6'6", six, six, ginger, Mr. Tish, in Rappahannock, taught fifth grade. Didn't like that I was smarter than him. That's probably what it was. I saw him when I was a freshman in college. I came back to Rappahannock. So I hadn't seen this man. I'm 18, 19. Hadn't seen him since fifth grade. And he's like... Hello, Lauren. As if like he <laughs> carried this like memory of me just, like, oh, just busting his balls. Students. Yeah. yeah, I was the kid who they'd be like, "Does anyone want to read this part?" My hand would shoot up, and I'd be like, "I'll read it." And they're <laughs> like, "Yeah, Lauren, we know you'll read it." I can I can picture that. I also have memory. Did you ever steal anything when you were a kid? Uh no. But okay, well, we didn't get in trouble for this. But so when I lived in England, um, this is when I was in sixth grade. Um, we would walk 
or ride our bikes to school and there was like these shops that you could stop on the way. Like everyone had a little bit of money to buy a candy bar or something. And my friends would steal candy and I never stole it, but I would eat the stolen candy. <laughs> so I was, I was definitely accomplice. complicit. Yeah, yeah, I was an accomplice. I, I, I knew that stealing was wrong and I never did it myself, but man, free candy was. Was it any of the friends that I met when we went yeah. to? Yeah. Oh, wow. it was Nick. You Nick. don't have to say it out loud. You just call him out. <laughs> Nick, if you're I was listening. I guessing it was Nick. Yeah. <laughs> One time in daycare, this girl wouldn't let me use her chapstick. So I stole it. <laughs> wow. I went to her cubby when I was leaving and I took her a little cherry chapstick and I stole it. And then we moved to Virginia. <laughs> with the chapstick. Yeah. <laughs> wow. So we're, we might be in some trouble with Quinn. Well, then my mom wouldn't let me have any candy at the grocery store. So I stole a pack of <laughs> breath mints. And then I was like, well, I better eat the evidence. I ate an entire roll of mints. My mouth was on fire. I was sitting in the back of the car, like my face in the seatbelt, like turned around so she couldn't see me. Although that's not subtle at all. Yeah. I ate every single mint and then I was just crying because it was so spicy. <laughs> Did they find out that you stole? Yeah, my mom found out. Uh, I think I probably had to go back and apologize or something. Wow. Man, you were kind of a, a problem child. I was a brat. Yeah, I was a brat. Okay. Yeah. So Quinn, be better than mommy. <laughs> Just be better. Than but look how you turned out. Yeah. You're great. I got sent to ISS another time in my gifted and, and gifted and talented class. Did you guys have gifted and talented? Mm -hmm. Yeah. This was like fifth grade or sixth grade, maybe fourth grade. I don't know. And I was talking too much out of turn and I got sent to ISS again. Chatty Kathy. I don't know what I was talking about. Do you want to do some more capositives? Sure. What do you have? One of my capositives this week is, I don't know if you'll notice... My sweatpants that I'm wearing, they're a little shorter than normal. And I got them hemmed. And that was the... So please tell the audience <laughs> that you paid money to have your sweatpants hemmed. I like my pants to fit a certain way. And whenever I buy sweatpants, they're like always too big and too baggy. And I was like, you know what? I can get them hemmed for relatively cheap. So I went to the tailor that I go to. <laughs> you brought how many pairs of sweatpants to the tailor? Five. And how much per pant? Fifteen. Fifteen dollars. You brought in five pairs of sweatpants to this tailor who yeah. does like suits yeah. and nice clothes. She and you're like... She definitely raised her eyebrows at me when I came in. But now they fit exactly how I want. And to be fair, anything I can, I buy used on Poshmark. So these are all Vori and... Lululemon sweatpants that I bought secondhand on Poshmark. So you got used sweatpants <laughs> hemmed. Yeah. Yeah. You they, clearly never stole anything as a child. <laughs> but they fit exactly how I want now. I think I just have short legs. I'm happy for you, you little weirdo. I appreciate that you you understand me. I don't understand you. <laughs> but I'm glad you're happy. Yeah, I'm pretty happy about it. My other capositive for the week is we're getting cabinets for our laundry room. Our house was remodeled in 2019 before we moved in. And so we don't know where anything in the house came from. And so our laundry room, we needed some wall cabinets. And I went on the internet and I just like could not find the so cabinets the, the to laun match. The laundry room has cabinets, like lower bottom cap cabinets, yeah. not upper cabinets. And we wanted to get upper cabinets that match the lower bottom cabinets. Right. Which I thought, okay, this should be easy. Like I know they did Lowe's or Home Depot or whatever for most of the stuff in the house. And I searched high and low for these cabinets and could not find them. We were like, okay, maybe it's been a project you've been working on for like a couple of years. Yeah. Cause it wasn't a super high priority. So it was like, whenever I had time, I was trying to like track down these, these cabinets. And so eventually it was like, all right, you know, we're not going to find them. We'll just buy something that looks close enough but like, I think it, both of us are too OCD and we're like, it was really kind of bothering us that we weren't going to have matching cabinets. Yeah. So I was like, let's just try a Google image search, uh, you know, reverse Google image search on it. So I upload the image and Google sends a bunch of stuff that's not it. And then there's a TikTok video. I click on the TikTok video and it's, it's a woman who's an influencer who like takes care of her kids on video or whatever. There's like a two second clip of her kitchen and she opens a cabinet and it's our cabinets. And I'm like, that's crazy that Google can find that. Yeah, like it was, wild. it was not a main part of the video at all. All she did was open the video a cabinet. wasn't even about cabinets? Not at all. Not at all. That's but insane. like it identified that. And so I was like, all right, well, here goes nothing. So I DM'd her. <laughs> I was like, this is really weird, but you know, you have the cabinets that we want. Where did you get them from? Um, she did not reply. 
She left you on red. Like Left like, me on like red. Jennifer Aniston. Yep. So I thought that was the end of the road. And I was like, you know what? I use Reddit for everything. Whenever I'm Googling something, I just add Reddit to the end because I want to have Reddit tell me what's the best way to do whatever. So I went on Reddit and I found the subreddit called Cabinetry. And I posted a photo of our cabinets. And I was like, hey, does anyone know what these are? And then some guy's like, oh, these are blah, blah, blah brand Tahoe linen finish. And I like Googled it. And I'm like, it's them. Oh my God, it's them. That is commitment. I was like, guess we're never getting cabinets. Oh, well, I do not care about anything to put that much effort into it as you did. I know. I'm impressed. It was a fun journey. Better you than me. So those are my two compositives. Okay. (sighs) All right. Well, follow us on Spotify and Apple Podcasts so that you get an alert when we drop new episodes. It also helps us out if you follow us. We have a Q&A function on Spotify that you can always drop a question there and we'll be answering. Follow the Kapower Hour Instagram. If you're watching this on YouTube, go ahead and subscribe. That would be amazing as well. So plenty of ways to help support us and we appreciate it. We'll keep bringing you more stuff. You want to, if there's a certain thing you want to hear more of, more Quinn, less Quinn, less Quinn, get out of here. (laughs) Never going to happen. But yeah, we're trying to find a good balance of drinks and babies. (laughs) Okay, well, we we are are Kapout. Kapout.